So consider this a little bit of an appreciation thread for the new Snapdragons that got announced at the Tech Summit in Hawaii. I feel like everybody has been talking about the Snapdragon 865. They always want to know what the flagship devices or flagship processors are going to be like. And there's a lot of stuff to really unpack when it comes to the Snapdragon 865. But let me talk about the first thing that I really enjoyed from it, and that's the Snapdragon 765 and the 765G. Now, the reason why these are really important are because uh, you're going to have really good performance and also 5G connectivity on more affordable devices. And to be honest, I love that. I've already experienced a little bit of this not too long ago with the, uh, with the Xiaomi Mi Note 10, which sports the Snapdragon 730G. And yeah, it's a 700 series processor. Um, the G moniker means that it's supposed to be good at gaming performance in particular. And to be honest, me using that phone with its crazy camera, its crazy camera array, and its fast charging and all of that stuff, um, there are a lot of really practical use cases for that phone, but it still comes in at a lower price, partially because it has a Snapdragon 730G. And if I'm absolutely honest, the Snapdragon 730G doesn't seem like it's a slouch at all. Uh, that phone feels flagship level on daily tasks, and when it comes to gaming, it does a really good job already. So consider this my way of saying that the 765 and the 765G, don't sleep on those. Those are going to be really important processors in 2020, and you're going to want to see what phones that comes out in. Those are the phones you might want to look out for the most as flagships and um, you know concept phones like foldables become more and more prevalent and also much more expensive. You're going to want to take a look at those mid-range devices because they're going to have really good performance on the daily, and as 5G becomes more proliferated, they will support 5G, and that's huge. But the, the Snapdragon 865 is obviously what all of you want to hear about. So here are a few things I loved about it. Uh, number one uh, is security. We're really used to face unlock now, and certain phones are actually doing away with fingerprint readers either on the back or even in the display. I mean, after all, I actually am holding a Pixel 4 XL right here, and it doesn't have any fingerprint reading. But now Qualcomm is trying to bring that back a little bit with a better in-display fingerprint reader. This is a little bit of footage of it uh, from the Summit. Basically, it's a much larger area where you can press pretty much any portion of it. Uh, and the idea here is that you can pick up the phone, and without looking at it, you can just naturally let let your thumb land in that area as you're taking your phone out of your pocket and then it will scan your fingerprint and you're good to go. One funny thing about this is that you can actually do more than one fingerprint. So if you have two fingerprints, uh, and you could just press the middle portion with both of your fingers like this, it would actually work. Uh, so you have a little bit more security in that sense. One thing that I thought was funny is if you could do three-factor authentication where you have face unlock and then you have two thumbprints. The next big point about the Snapdragon 865 has to be about the cameras. And there are a couple of main points I want to show here. The first one is that more phones in 2020 can support even more cameras. Again, we're going back to the Xiaomi Mi Note 10. And even then, Xiaomi went on stage and said that the Mi 10 is going to support the Snapdragon 865. The Mi Note 10 already had five cameras on the back, so who knows how many are going to end up on the Mi 10. But yeah, with more lens means more possibilities, and that's only going to make things better for a smartphone photographer. What I really would love to see, though, is front-facing cameras get a bit of a boost. If the processor can not only handle five-plus cameras on the rear, maybe we can get a couple of those lenses to move to the front. Uh, but in any case, it's going to be a really powerful processor, especially for image processing, because this is the processor that allows... Wow, I said processor a lot, didn't I? This is the processor that allows for image software to, re to be really robust and allow for multi-frame for a lot of HDR, for a lot of really great captures. Uh, and all that these companies actually have to do is turn all of those features on. And speaking of features that I hope manufacturers actually turn on in these processors, the one that I really want is that 8K 60 frames per second recording. Now, hear me out. Uh, I don't record in 8K. Even my DJI Osmo Pocket right here is at 2.7K, which is basically Quad HD resolution. Uh, and Quad HD resolution is still a good sweet spot for me. If you notice here on my channel, I actually upload everything at about Quad HD resolution, 1440p as it were. I record in 4K, but I don't render out in 4K. It's kind of a space saving thing, but also I just don't really feel the need for it. So in that vein, of course, we don't really need 8K recording yet, but what 8K 60 frame per second recording does afford you is better 4K recording, better Quad HD recording, and one of my favorite things would be 4K at 120 frames per second. 
And then finally, this is the part that you're all waiting for. Um, if you're on the YouTube side right now, if you're listening to the podcast right now, I hope you enjoy this sort of way that I'm putting all of this stuff together. It's just sort of random thoughts over tea, or at least in this case, coffee. Uh, it's just random thoughts over the course of maybe 20 to 30 minutes of me talking about stuff, and that is Tech and Tea with Joshua Vergara. But if you are on the YouTube side right now, you are seeing clips of the reference device that we got to test out with all of these different benchmarking tools. Now, Qualcomm tends to give you all of these benchmarks and they tell you what the scores are and you get to sort of fact check it and see those scores happening for yourself. The scores are obviously going to be super high, but what I ended up doing, and this was kind of a request from Thunder E over at Board at Work, um, he wanted me to play a game on there. And obviously the benchmarking game that we usually pick is PUBG Mobile. So that's me playing PUBG Mobile on here. And there are a couple of things that I want to share about my experience on PUBG Mobile. Number one is the fact that I was able to turn on all of the top settings, anti-aliasing. Um, I was able to get to HDR quality and ultra high frame rates, and it did not skip a beat. While I can't really say whether or not any stutters that happened in the game were because of the processor or because of the internet connection we had in there, after all, we had like two dozen devices all connected to the same Wi-Fi at once. Um, the bottom line is that the game performed so smoothly, and then I got into the settings and turned on the boost mode or the performance mode. Apparently in this reference device, the Snapdragon 865 was actually clocked at a certain um, speed that would be typical of daily uh, smartphone usage. But you can unlock that last maybe 15 to 20% of it by getting into the performance mode, and that's exactly what I did. I have to admit, I can't really tell if there was a full change in my gameplay there because I already had all the settings at high or, or at full or max or whatever the case may be uh, without the performance mode on. But the bottom line is that the gaming performance was really good. So visual quality is obviously going to be incredible. Um, and hopefully we're going to be seeing more games adopt the ultra high frame rates and uh, the HDR capabilities that these processors will allow. And again, just like I keep saying, there are going to be, there is going to be that question about whether or not manufacturers actually turn on all of these features. The bottom line is that the Snapdragon A65 will allow flagship phones of 2020 to do a bunch of stuff, as long as the phones actually support all of those features. High refresh rate screens, multiple cameras, 8K recording, maybe even 4K 120, uh, and then of course gaming performance as long as everything is there. And in an ideal world, you're going to get some of those gaming performance enhancements in the 765G, which again, just makes that a really well sought after processor, especially for those looking to save a little bit of money. All right, so those were just some main thoughts uh, in the first half of this podcast uh, regarding the Snapdragon 865, Qualcomm's Tech Summit. Thank you again to Qualcomm for bringing me out. Um, accommodations and travel were covered by Qualcomm so that I could even attend the Tech Summit. So massive thanks to Qualcomm for that. And there's a lot to look forward to in 2020. This is just one of those things, and it will be in a lot of smartphones that I'm sure a lot of us will be happy to try out.